the decline in value from the highs, I mean, you're talking at least 50% on Bitcoin, 70% on some other coins like Doge. People argue if it had been any other asset class, we'd be doing primetime specials every night. Why aren't you concerned? <laughs> well, look, um, nothing goes up in a straight line. Uh, you can't have a transformative technology just immediately shift uh, to an end state. It happens in stages. And uh, those stages, if you go back over time, uh, you know, they looked inevitable. Uh, but actually, when you zoom in, there was a lot of ups and downs. We saw that with the Internet. We saw that with even looking at Amazon stock. So I think we have to put everything in perspective, which is what a huge shift we've had so far. Uh, it's not over um, and it's not going to be a straight line. But at the same time, where do we think it's really going to get to in the next five or 10 years? That, that huge shift is absolutely uh, why some argue the Chinese in particular are so concerned. Uh, do you doubt their um, resolve in trying to rein in some of the trading and mining? Or do you think they're going to change their mind? Or do you think we've already reached some kind of escape velocity from global regulation? Well, I think uh, at the end of the day, uh, crypto mining and uh, the crypto space is a lot about American values, which is freedom, the ability to make choice, open access. And I think those aren't necessarily the things that China's trying to solve for. And so their crackdown on mining um, is probably for a number of different reasons. But ultimately, uh, the thing about mining is it can move, and it will. And it's already looking at different places it can go, including the U.S., other Western European countries. And I think ultimately uh, it might uh, create a short-term blip in some adoption and the way things that uh, shift around in the industry. But fundamentally, it will actually put us in a stronger place. And so I think it's actually a really positive uh, in the long term. Of course, in the short term, uh, there's going to be some uh, noise, and you just have to work through that. Chad, how long term are we talking about? I ask because uh, New York Times reporter Nathaniel Popper, who wrote uh, a book on Bitcoin, basically, pointed out yesterday on Twitter that it really you can kind of pinpoint every time there's been a major crackdown in China to a major sell-off uh, in Bitcoin. And so my question is, you know, how intertwined is price activity with that regulation? Uh, and when does it kind of diversify to the extent that it isn't as reliant on news and headlines that keep coming out of China with regard to regulation? Well, the reality is that uh, Asia is a really huge market for it, and China is the biggest market in Asia. And so we have to recognize that's the case. If you look at trading volumes, they're really significant to China. On the other hand, I think uh, there's kind of a pattern of you crack down on things and then, you know, after a while, you kind of loosen it back up again. So we don't know if that's what we're seeing or maybe it's something more endemic. But ultimately, where, where do we think this is going to be in the next five or 10 years? I personally believe this is about replatforming the financial system. It's about how in, I think, 18 months, um, almost everyone will have access to crypto through digital wallets. And so that's what I think the end state looks like. And so if you go back to today, Clearly, uh, the Chinese government taking an action can affect a very large market uh, in the world and in, in, uh, in general, and in crypto specifically. But is that what's really going to change the adoption curve here? Uh, I personally don't believe it will. And actually, um, in some ways, uh, this is a positive because it's going to force um, many different actors within the crypto ecosystem to go to places that embrace the rule of law and freedom in a way that they may, uh, may have not in the past. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.